time for episode 60 of This Week in Google This Week. Kevin Purdy joins us from Lifehacker. He's the author of a brand new book on Android, lots of Android facts, lots of Google news, too. Stay tuned. This Week in Google is coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by CashFly, C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. You'll find all the Twitch shows on your Roku box, Android, and BlackBerry phones at all Yahoo Widget TVs powered by Mediafly. For more information, visit twit.tv slash Mediafly. It's time for Twig, This Week in Google, Episode 60, recorded September 15th, 2010. Pub sub hubbub fud. It's time for Twig this week in Google. We cover Google and the cloud. And here to do it with us, it's partly cloudy wherever Gina goes, but partly sunny because of her smile. Gina Trapani. Hello, from, from hello. Cicely and smarterware.org. And That's me. uh and in the remainder bin, the complete guide to Google Wave. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. So cool. <laughs> it's so cool. Well, no, wait a minute. In a way, you're saved because uh, isn't it going open source and people are going to need documentation and the I'm future is bright. So. Yeah, no, the future is bright for that Google Might be wave. a wave book in a box. We'll see. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> With wave. Yeah. Yeah. Also here, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Jarvis back home finally from his travels. There I am. And all over the Home world. Sweet. Author of What Would Google Do? This fine book available everywhere in bookstores. See, Jeff, if Google went out of business, you, this would be in the remainder bin too, but <laughs> fortunately. So, so would Jeff the made a better bet than I did. <laughs> you bet on the whole company, you see. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not always a good bet, but also with us today, we're glad to have him. Kevin Purdy is back. He is, uh, uh, of course, editor. Are you editor in chief of Life Lifehacker? No, no, that is Adam Pash. Um, oh, that's right. I am that's a, right, I'm a contributing editor over there. Contributing editor and the author of a brand new book. Did it come out today? Yes, uh, an hour and a half ago, actually. <gasps> this is so uh, exciting. Yes, uh, the complete the complete Android guide. And you're doing the same thing Gina did, uh, which is uh, online sales. Yes, uh, a a freely browsable website, and uh, beyond that, there's a a, a DRM free uh, PDF, EPUB, and uh, paper book if you want that too. And there That's it is, great. 1995 to buy the paperback, nine dollars for the ebook, and That's of course right. the website's here at completeandroidguide.com. We're gonna do a an Android show actually, so I'm gonna have to get this book and read it. Not about a, a programming Android, but apps and uh, tips and so forth. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pleased to say, before the show, I was able to show Kevin yet another tip. Yeah, sorry, I was on the phone before. Who's Which that? we'll get to later. No? Is there somebody in the room with you? With me? With okay. I hear yes, it. actually, oh, there oh, is okay. somebody in the room with me. Say, I'm sorry. You're I'll, not alone. <laughs> I'll, I'll address that in a moment, Kevin. <laughs> get out of the house. Sorry. That phone call is coming from inside. I know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Lost my head. Sorry, Leo, I'll take care of I just got to ask: Have they already legalized marijuana in California? <laughs> Any minute now, Jeff. You sound like it. Any ready. minute now. Now we were talking about that earlier in the day because it, in November, I guess it's on the ballot, and uh, it's. I'd say it's about even money that it might pass. And there's a suggestion <laughs> in Twitter for this week in weed. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> somebody, somebody was arguing that you ought to, uh, you ought to start this week in weed. This week in weed. Twoo. Yeah, we might. Amen. Amen. You got anything to talk about? We we're going to do this week in bongs. What up? It'll be awesome. Like Bob Marley and some bongs. It'll be great. <laughs> bong talk. Bong talk. Bong talk. Bong talk John. today. <laughs> 420. This week in hash. 420. There you go. Every show will be exactly four minutes and 20 seconds long. It'll be great. <laughs> at 420. <laughs> at 420. We aired it at 420. Well, I do a little dance. I'll do this a little later on. You know, when it's 1337, I do the little leap dance in here. <laughs> <laughs> and just get up on the, oh, on the table. <laughs> I know, I'm such a geek. So I, I shouldn't waste time because, golly, there's a lot of news uh, here. First of all, Eric Schmidt has now confirmed that Google Me is coming soon to a computer near you. Uh, he says sometime this fall, the Google Me service will introduce what Google calls a social layer uh, onto online search video Google Maps. This is coming from Googling Google. 
the aptly named blog from uh, Garrett Rogers and uh, Christopher Dawson on ZDNet. But, uh, but I guess it's both the Wall Street Journal and uh, Reuters who are quoting um, Schmidt saying it's coming. And in fact, if you are at the uh, Intel Developers Forum today, apparently if you go up to the Google booth, <laughs> there's a guy there who's saying, uh, yeah, it's going to be in October. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> you didn't get the memo, I guess. Uh, the man manning the Google TV booth, this is from Gearlog.com, at the Intel Developer Forum is, forum is telling passersby that Google TV will launch in, in the October-November time frame. This uh, one guy. One guy. And, ga <laughs> and Gadget says October 15th. Is there any further 14th. definition of what the heck it is? Google TV what? or Google Me? Oh, me first. Me first. Well, no. that's, that's the thing, right? It kind of changed no. from what we thought. Like we, or at least what I thought, we were thinking it was kind of be this going to be this like standalone product, sort of like Facebook. But now it sounds like it's just going to be sort of this like layer or this add-on or like an update, basically to Google Social, which means basically. practically nothing, right? Because I mean, it's exactly yeah. it's like kind of uh, isn't that what we have already? Kind of. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm trying to imagine what this would look like. I mean, does it mean that if I search for Mad Men, I see the list of all my Facebook friends that like or have mentioned Mad Men? I mean, I imagine that's sort of <sighs> more what it's about. Well, you kind uh, of do already if you search on Google for Mad Men. Don't, don't they show you results in the, in the Twitter feed from uh, your friends? Oh, maybe not. Maybe I have to click the social button. Yeah, here it is. Social results. From my circle, my social circle. So, yeah, so here's it sounds Flickr. like it's going to be like this on crack. I mean, what else? What else could they do um, to make these results more meaningful, or to inject social, or make? Sur I mean, is it is it about making search more social? Well, it's what you know. We've always said is they have all the pieces already. They've yep. got they've got buzz. Uh, they've for what it's worth, they've yeah. got um, uh, they've got profiles which are tightly integrated with buzz. Uh, what else would they add? They've got social search. What other pieces would you... Oh, I know. And this is actually something that there's been a lot of talk about. They've got your contacts in Google Voice. Uh, that's another circle. In fact, danger, danger. Yeah, I know. But Nokia's been talking about this uh, uh, at, their, at the at Nokia that's event. That's not social. That's, that's the, that was the fundamental mistake with Buzz, of course. Is I often email people I wish I were antisocial with. Yeah, just that's not a vote for somebody because they're in your address or contact no, list. No, I don't know. If I call someone a lot, that person, I mean, I, I probably, we all probably call maybe five people on a regular basis. That's I'm not pretty friendly with my prostate surgeon. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a, uh, there's a, it's a superset yeah, of your, yeah, it's a superset. Nice and uh, Gina, you're not even in my phone book or address book. I, I've never, uh, I don't know your number. Well, in fact, I was thinking today, right. I was, I was driving home like a madman trying to make sure I got here. And if I got hit traffic, I have no way to call anyone from. from <laughs> we don't have our phone numbers. We no. don't need them. We have your email. We have your, I have your email, obviously. Right. Right. And we spend an hour together every week. So, I mean, you, you got, I talk to you guys more than I do a lot of my closest friends. But I, yeah. And I could tell you if I were. The Gina, minute, you are one of my closest friends. You're my only <laughs> friend. <laughs> I mean. You, you and Jeff yeah. are it. No, no, it's, seriously, I feel, we feel, I feel very close to you, and if I were going to follow anybody, and I want suggestions for anybody, it would be from you two, right? Yep. But, there, but you don't show up in my contact list. The only place we show up together is by every week at this time, tweeting our, which I forgot to do right now, tweeting our names together. So how smart will Google be? It could, it could deduce that from that. It could. Twitter's it could done, you know, this new Twitter, and I, I don't want to change subjects, but uh, this new Twitter surfaces its Twitter suggestions very, you know, right, well, I guess it was always on the front page, but it just seems more obvious to me now. I really like the new Twitter. And those suggestions are very good. I don't know, but they're obviously doing some clever food. They're doing very clever algorithmic work. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's perhaps one of the best reasons to buy Twitter is not just, okay, so Twitter, but there's something very smart going on there, and it also proves a social graph link that's very powerful. And they only know tweeting, but maybe tweeting is better than your contact list. In fact, I bet it is. I think it is. Yeah. I think it is. Well, you know, Zuckerberg said when I talked to him that nobody wants to sit down and make a list of friends. Right. Right? It's tedious. And, and, and they know that, especially because when we got opportunities to segregate our friends into groups, and I thought I wanted that, I don't. It's, it's, right. it's, it's a pain. That your friends' contacts do come, they, they are emergent from your actions, from what you do. 
it certainly would be it certainly would be useful. I mean, I have found it very useful in Google Voice and now in, because of it in my contacts to to segregate people because I have different voicemail messages. I uh, handle phone calls differently. If you guys call me, you would get through. Whereas if somebody else that I don't know calls, they won't get through automatically. There's just just all sorts of stuff that you do want to do. But I think the Twitter could it be done automatically? Like you said well, no. The thing is, is that is the Twitter shows shared interests and shared friendships and other things, whereas simple communication, email, phone, doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I'm finding you know the Google priority inbox is is working pretty darn well mm -hmm. for me. It's pretty impressive what it can do. Um, I have switched, as I mentioned last week, my all my email to Google because of it. And how do you like it? It's Fantastic. Working? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it really where I've heard some people complain, but if you but all you have to do is you know you 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 kind of massage it a little bit and it gets smarter and smarter. Yeah, I think it works. Yeah, quite so, well. so there's something there in email that I guess does have something that maybe. But again, Google got in such trouble with Buzz, and Buzz doesn't work as a predictor of of very disappointing relationships. Yeah, they should know better. In fact, the Buzz recommendations is not nearly as good as Twitter's recommended. Of course, they don't have as much data, do they? I mean, no. this is where this is where the network effect shows itself in in some other unusually and maybe more subtle ways. With when you have a lot of users, or even a you know something like a complete universe as Facebook and Twitter almost have, you can do so much of a better job with a lot of things. You must see that in your application, Gina. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Jeff's point is a good one in that you know you can't you can't uh, take a collection of communication habits and then determine necessarily determine relationships from them, right? Because we're a good example. We talk every week. We're close, but we're, you know you wouldn't be able to tell that from our email activity. But in the in the in the the context of priority inbox, it's making decisions based solely on your email. Uh, activity and I think at one point it initially marked a message from Jeff as not important. I marked it as important, and now oh. anytime I get a message from Jeff, it's important. But like Jeff and Jeff, you know, we don't email that much, mostly because right, we right. all get too much email, right? right. right. <laughs> so I email you guys as little as possible. So you kind of do have to teach it. Um, so I think you know Twitter recommendations work really well because it has they have a lot of data, and if you especially if you interact a lot on Twitter, then it has a lot of data about you. I think Facebook does a great job too, but those are closed contexts. So I mean, I don't know, is is, is Google going to be able to Look at all those different contacts. Look at my Skype contacts. Look at my Twitter. Look at my Facebook. Look at my phone call log. Look at my, you know, email, and then determine groups based on that. I'm not sure. I mean, I, you know, I think I don't know. I don't think any company can ever come up with a satisfactory list of labels that people would, you know, buck put their put their people in buckets. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. You're a perfect person for this because Think Tank, your analytics program. Does some of this kind of stuff, right? I mean, it it does do some of this kind of stuff. It, it's called Think Up now. Think Up, um, right? Yeah, yeah. And we we are doing some social graph like analysis. Um, although honestly, I'm I'm leaving that to I'm going to leave that to Twitter's doing that really well and Facebook does that really well. So I'm, we're not doing too much of that. The point I think Think Up is more just surfacing really good ideas from conversations. I mean, ideas start in conversations. So I want Think Up to kind of archive conversations and surface the good ideas. And sometimes your relationships have something to do with that. Like Leo, you're my friend, so. If you respond to a tweet of mine, it's going to show at the top of the list because right. you're someone I trust. Well, and that's like a priority much. inbox. That's the same kind of thing. Yeah, right? it's the same kind of yeah. thing. So I think it's you know it's a combination of a lot of what things. What could Google I, know? Sorry, what could Google know from the web about us? Well, it knows a lot if it has uh, you know, and as in my case, four years or five years of web search history. What what could you what could you squeeze out of that? tease out of that to be valuable you s they certainly can i mean what they've been looking at it for is ads so they know what my interests are why why would it not work to do use the same technology they use right now for adsense to show me re re relevant ads to show me relevant tweets comments people. articles people. and people same thing isn't it maybe i mean yeah for for gathering people around interests that would work really well, even though it would creep me out a lot. Well, I've, <laughs> if I've searched 100 times for athlete's foot, um, <laughs> that, which I haven't, but, I, but if I had, um, and I would get an ad for athlete's foot medicine in on my lots of my pages. Am I then going to get everybody who says, tweets the word athlete's foot? Am I going to see those tweets? That would be a pri that would be a privacy I'd hate that. bonanza for the enemies. Yeah, so yeah, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. So you have to constrain the subject material. If I, on the other hand, tweet about the Boston Red Sox or search a lot on the Boston Red Sox, 
it would be great if I would see stuff, content around that. Yeah, it would be great if, if you had a friend or if you knew someone or one of your friends knew someone who was also a really big Sox fan and you didn't realize. You know, that's someone who you're going to want to follow and, you know, talk talk about the game when it's on. Um, so it can do that kind of stuff. Like, here, here, meet this person that you didn't realize that you know. So it could be about kind of extending your social graph. But wouldn't that, but if you're on the other end of that, wouldn't so, that be irritating? Well, that's the thing. It's, it's obvious that some things, athletes foot too personal or prostate cancer. But maybe not. For you, maybe, you, maybe not. prostate no, cancer would be something thing. you would like to know about. So it's, I don't know how not, they know. It's not context. You know, when I, when I go through, I've got a bug in Facebook, and I've had it for quite a while, but it's actually been kind of nice because it's quiet. It says that I have too many friends when maybe it knows me better than I do, but I don't have anywhere near 5,000. I have about half that. And so it won't let anyone ask to be my friend. Fa Facebook has a very nice. it's become very nanny-ish lately. When well, I, I think this, this is a bug. This is uh, Howard Kurtz said the same thing. They say it's a bug, and it goes. It went. It went off recently, and then it went back on. So I thought I had to kill. I also have about twenty five hundred unresponded friend requests because I just ignore them. I mean, literally ignore them. I don't do anything. Right. So I was going through a bunch trying to kill off enough that I could get to something because folks, I just befriend people I actually know or I've met, and um, the ones who came from Friend Finder meant nothing to me. Right, whereas where, where it, you know, Facebook was saying you should know this person, it didn't mean anything. Whereas when Twitter says that, it means something to me. So maybe Twitter's got some nice. secret sauce that we just. Uh, this is going to be very hard. Twitter keeps coming up the winner in this particular section segment, and better than Facebook, much better than anything Google's done. Yeah. So what can Google do? It's just hard to imagine. A social layer. I mean, they've already done the one thing that it's obvious, which is this uh, adding social to your search. Kevin, come on. You, you, you <laughs> don't get to sit there quietly and I, I know. I was thinking that it would be answer. great if there was, like, it's, it would almost be, like, delicious, the, the idea that, that you just have this bin that you throw things in for Google, Google to look oh, at. This, like you said, because like, you counts. don't want athlete's foot, but you do want, you know, um, Android or you and want, And that solves you know, the pro privacy problem, doesn't it? Because it's all, it's all volitional. It's all opt-in. <laughs> Yeah, but how do you get the how do you get the user behavior such that it's not annoying for them to um, it's not you another know, form of making hit a lists. button, throw it yeah. like even the the Google search results uh, experiment where you could move things up and down and vote right. you know cross them out from your um, results and get you know personalized was, was search wiki it was called right uh, yeah side wiki side yeah. wiki side I'm sorry side wiki well and then also just the the hitting up and down on the individual search results that didn't work out that hot or a lot of people didn't like that. Do they still do that even? Uh, side I wiki? think you No, no, the search the Not side uh, wiki the the changing the search results. Yeah, and, oh, and yeah, even yeah. that. I think it was search one, wiki. One button that you can hit to say yes, no, good, bad. I, I think I don't that's know gone. That, gets that much use. I don't yeah. see it anymore. I think well, the yeah, lesson is that people don't want to have to curate they don't want to have to organize things. You know, I, I don't even have my iTunes library organized. My house is a mess. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to organize all my information <laughs> always and be like, oh, this goes in this box, this goes in this box, whether it's my contacts or... Okay, but, 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 you know. but, 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 priority inbox takes a stab at it, and then you don't mind so much tweaking That's it. That's true. That's true, because, and it's same as reporting span, because I know that it's going to save me a moment it's in the worth future. It. It's worth it. I know that mm -hmm. Jeff's email is going to be marked as, as important in the, in the future, so then it's worth it for me to hit, the, hit that button. Right. I guess, yeah, right. I guess that's the difference, right? So I didn't, I never really curated or thumbs up my search results because I felt like, what, what, when what, am I ever going to search for this benefit? again? I just need this now. It, yeah. feels like, it feels like you're throwing a rock at Kilimanjaro. It, it's right. like you're, you're not really changing something that's going to have a you know, long-term effect, it feels like. Well, and it wasn't immediately apparent that it was uh, changing anything for the better either. It was just changing it. I, yeah. I, I made me nervous because I thought, well, I don't want to screw with my search results. I want, I want that's Google's job. I don't want to bring something up and have it come up too high because I brought it up. Yeah, so, the social buy-in is pretty low. Like, I really want to help yeah. people find, you know, Gillette razor blades later. I, I got to make sure I mark this up. Right. <laughs> so that's that's interesting. So again, this comes back to something I said a few weeks ago, which is Google needs not more computer scientists but more social scientists. Oh yeah, more mm -hmm. anthropologists. This is their real. This is the whole problem. Right. And you get the feeling that everybody's doing it by instinct. And it's whoever's instinct was best. Somebody said, uh, when, whenever I use Facebook, I saw this. It was a great tweet. I wish I could remember who said it. I can do only exactly what Mark Zuckerberg has figured out I want to do or could should do and nothing more. Because it's so clearly a personal project. 
It's not a platform in, in, in the same way. It's not a platform. Yeah. It's whereas, a, whereas yeah. you can use Craigslist to find family members after Katrina. You can use it to, to, to do anything. That's it. And I think that's what Google's saying is we're going to build a platform. But now, to make a platform work, you need buy-in from not just users, but more, more importantly, developers. Is that right? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you know, going back to the Facebook thing, Anil Dash wrote this great post about about Facebook. But I guess there was the, in that New Yorker profile of Zuckerberg. I guess he said that he he um, he realized that he's red green colorblind. So that's part of the reason why Facebook is blue is because he can fully see blue. <laughs> that proves so, the point exactly. So literally, <laughs> Facebook's what blue Facebook is because is limited by Zuckerberg's like wow. ability to see colors. Uh, so I, I that was amazing to me. I haven't really. I've only scanned a, that New Yorker profile. And by the way, it is online, so you don't have to be a New Yorker subscriber to uh, yeah. read it. Um, but it, Mark also admitted, yeah, yeah, that email that was circulating a few months ago where I said the, those dumb f's. They're giving me all the information. Yeah, I said that. Uh, it was a pretty candid interview. But, you know, uh, it's, it seems to be pretty clear that what's happening here is they're, they're uh, bringing Mark around to buff up his image prior to the release of the social network. Movie. Movie. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. the movie's going to movie. slaughter the poor kid. <laughs> just... Yeah, um, uh, Peter Kafka at Media Memo said that it wasn't an amazing movie, but he wouldn't want to be Mark Zuckerberg yeah. and, and see it. Yeah. Yeah. I I haven't I I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how they make um, programming interesting. Like if they'll do the you know the hackers type thing where he's typing and he, he you know breaks the encryption in one night, <laughs> you know writes an entire code base overnight with just like you know Mountain Dew and, and Pringles or something. Dramatic typing, fencing, <laughs> dramatic typing. typing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forget the dramatic Perry dog. We need a dramatic chipmunk. Yeah. We need dramatic typing. <laughs> it's all it's all gonna be it's all gonna be montage, fast cut. It's time. a lot of whiteboarding, I think. Yeah, a lot of whiteboarding. Yeah, yeah, whiteboarding. There you go. But you you know, Mark Zuckerberg did not whiteboard one damn thing. Oh, actually, actually, he told me that he remembers the day when he whiteboarded the social graph for the first time in really? his dorm room. Yep. And he, he had a whiteboard in his dorm room. His and he dorm used room. It. Yeah, that's the beautiful part. Yes. <laughs> Well, I take it back. I guess I misunderestimated him. No. No. Uh, so, well, so we're going to have Google Me and Google TV. Oh, we're just not going to know what uh, it's going to be Google You. Yeah, it's, I don't know what it's going to be. Google Me, Google TV. Yeah, I mean, Schmidt did say that he, he was hoping that Facebook would open up their contact data, their social graph <laughs> data, to Google, which isn't going to happen. But but Twitter's social uh, contact data is open to Google. Is so it? it'll be interesting to see, right? I mean, if Google's going to do sort of recommendations that Twitter's doing, who's going to do a better job of that, Twitter <laughs> or Google? So that's part of the API, and you can suck that stuff uh, from Facebook? or oh, they, they, have the fi they have the fire hose at Google. They well, yeah, they have mm -hmm. the Twitter fire hose. So that the social graph data, yeah, is all available via the API. Be. And I, I assume that, that Google has, you know, super duper access to the social Although, graph fire hose. Remember what happened when Apple uh, said, oh, yeah, and by the way, you'll be able to use Facebook Connect on Ping. And Facebook said, uh-uh. <laughs> oh, no, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it was have Facebook guys, that said that? Uh, or it was Ping Jobs. I thought it was Sorry. Jobs that... Uh, According to Kara Swisher... Uh, Jobs told her that that day in the announcement of Ping that uh, they had planned to have Facebook and they, 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 he showed it. They had Facebook Connect built into it. But if you are, a, and that's part of the API, but if you're a big player and might suck a lot of bandwidth, they want you to negotiate a deal. And Jobs told Kara, boy, Facebook's driving a hard bargain. <laughs> said the, the terms were too onerous. Terms, so you think that was about price. You don't think that, that was about... No, I don't think it's the, money necessarily. Who knows what the terms were? They might uh, want okay. data back. Who knows? That's what I thought. That's yeah. what I assumed. Uh -huh. But it could be the price. So, yeah, who knows who pulled the plug? But it's clear that if Facebook doesn't want to play, play along, they don't have, you know... Right. Google doesn't necessarily get that data. And, and Facebook's going to act in its own... This is one thing very clear. Facebook is going to act in its own best interest, not in the interest of the Internet. It would be in the interest of all for all of this data to be unsiloed and available. That's when you get it. Then the network effect doesn't matter because everybody's got every, access to everything and you can build this. You know, it's whoever's smartest about parsing the data. And Facebook and Twitter, uh, to a lesser degree, I guess, their attitude is, well, we got the data. So, you know, it's not about... I guess Twitter's pretty open with the data. It'd be great if you I could, still you wish know, kind of... Go ahead, Sorry, go it would be great if you, with all the uh, OAuth work that uh, Google's doing, you, there are so many apps now, uh, web apps that you can sign in with your Google credentials. Uh, more and more I see every day. It would be great if 
they would allow you to to use your Google OAuth to um, let certain parts of your your data go. Like you were just saying, like you know, kind of peel your own onion out and say, well, I'm going to let you know Google use this and this and this in my search results uh, by signing in and you know letting some of it go. I mean, they kind of do that. But not really now. Well, you can also see why it's in Google's interest to promote the open web because they ain't got nothing. So uh, the open web benefits, it's a one-way street from their point of view, data flowing from Facebook and Twitter to Google. That, you know, and, so, and you can see why Facebook and Twitter might say, well, maybe not. Look at it another way. What could Google do that would disrupt the hell out of Facebook? That's the question, isn't it? Because you can't right, I mean, count on cooperation. I go back to your idea that if I had my basically my personality server, if the if the if the um, if my page my identity were on Google and I could serve up my data to other parties, that's still the the wish. Does that disrupt Facebook? Well, that's what my that's what I thought profile was kind of about. Google yeah. profile is you control your information because we're not going to leave Facebook. No. Uh, you learned that lesson, didn't you, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Sad, embarrassingly. You will not leave. You You'll think you've left, but you have not left. I've left Twitter a couple of times, too. It's, uh, yeah, you got to be where the people are. For the world's highest nice guy, you do get pissed at things and leave them, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a That's short That's it. I'm fuse. kicking my ball and going home. Short fuse. Well, look, you know, in theory, and this is, I think, one of the promises of the Internet era there's everything's friction free there's no doesn't need to be loyalty because uh there's a bunch of companies competing you know uh bookmarking is a good example uh, there's a bunch of companies with bookmarking services and it's friction free as long as data moves freely if there aren't exactly. artificial constraints on data it's friction free and so you just move around to where you want to live the problem is in practice it isn't because data isn't friction free you you're you can move friction free you can use different search engines because how much they know about you is irrelevant. But you can't use different bookmark engines unless they let you export and import. And you right. certainly mm -hmm. can't use different social networks unless your friends can somehow see you or participate with you on that other network. And that's what I learned is that exactly the thing I didn't like about Facebook, which is that it's a silo, is exactly the thing that protects it. And yeah. keeps me and makes means I can't leave it because that's where everybody is. Twitter to, to a pretty pretty much the same degree, I have to say. I, when I left Twitter in April 2007, very early, <laughs> <laughs> I had 5,000 followers. And I think I was number one or number two. And uh, I, left, I said, this is it. I can't use Twitter for a number of reasons. And uh, when I came back, uh, there was nowhere else. Nobody followed. You know, it was like <laughs> charge over the hill. Where are you? <laughs> Where'd, you go? Where'd everybody go? But Jaiku is so much better. And it and even and I first I thought, oh, people can't see that it's better. And now I realize it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with all this uh inertia. Critical mass. It's critical mass. And when it's a silo, you're gonna have critical mass. So it's in Google's interest that all this stuff be open and freely freely transported and, and given away. Uh and because Google has, you know, they have some data, but they don't have the people. I mean, I think that there's two winners in the world going forward. Uh, I was saying this to somebody in media the other day, those who have data and those who have relationships. And the winner of winners is the ones who have relationships that produce data. Does Google have that kind of relationship? No, that's the problem. It doesn't. Twitter does. Facebook certainly does. Um, well, I feel like Twitter is such a big winner right now. I, did you watch the Video Music Awards? They kept putting up a billboard of how many, uh, 8 billion tweets an hour now and... Uh, Lady Gaga's number one and number two is Justin Bieber. I mean, they, it, Twitter was all over the VMA, which shows that uh, it's a youth movement, which is very good. It's what you want. Which which everyone says it wasn't. Oh, the kids don't use yeah. Twitter. It's just uh -uh. old farts like you, Leo, and yeah. you, Jarvis. Yeah, no. Nope. Twitter's, Twitter's numbers don't still don't come close to Facebook's, though, right? No. They're getting I mean, close. Really? Uh, they're, yeah, they're, well, I think it was over 100 million. It was 100, 180 million. And what does Facebook have? Half a billion. 500. Yeah, 500. Well, that's close enough. I mean, come on. What's a few well, hundred yeah. million? I, I just, I don't know. Sometimes I think, I, I, I agree. Listen, I, I prefer Twitter over Facebook, but I've talked to people who are just like, Twitter doesn't drive half the traffic. It doesn't have half the users as Facebook oh, does. And I think the reason why we see it at the VMAs and things like that is because Twitter's default is that that information is public. So they can show all the tweets. Right. You know what I mean? 
Facebook can't right. doesn't do that kind of stuff because the idea is that it's like come and in, come inside the wall garden. I mean, could Facebook technically show a list of status updates that mention the VMAs? They couldn't, right? Is there a way? Well, I mean, remember, the, uh, no, with, with the Obama um, the inauguration, that you could yeah. sign in through Facebook and yep. and you could leave things that your friends would see, but you could also make them public. Remember but, the uh, election page, which was such a great page. It was real time. It was uh, scrolling up. It was your. It was great because it was your social graph plus. You could just watch your. They had tabs, you, right? You could just watch your yeah. friends, or you could watch the everyone. Yeah. Then you. Then you found out how many of your friends have. Uh, you know, can be online on Facebook at eleven a.m. on a work on a work day. <laughs> <laughs> but Gina, yeah, you could, Gina, you're you right. See either one. You're, you're right, Gina. That 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 goes back to the problems that Facebook has had before, and, and my ridiculous screed about understanding a public versus the public. Um, Facebook is designed for us to speak to our private public, not to the whole world. And, and, and Zuckerberg is clearly jealous of that. Oh, man, he must be watching the VMAs going. Yeah. I mean, I think Twitter but, just has really good uh, like connections in Hollywood as well. Oh, yeah. Well, Hollywood loves Twitter. Yeah. In uh, a way that not so much as, because, not well, as much as Facebook. If you're Steve Martin, who just joined Twitter today and already has 50,000 followers. If you're Steve Martin, where you? And you want to post funny bomos and, you know, here's where you can get my book. Where are you going to do that? Not on Facebook. Yeah. You're going to have a Facebook okay. page. I'm sure he does. You're going to have a like button on your, on your blog, of course. But where are you really? Where is, where is your big megaphone? Where is your big well, mouth? Well, it, it's different, too. I, I learned talking to son Jake when we visited Zuckerberg that Jake's peers look at the wall as a place to have a conversation. Right. My peers look at it as a place to publish and broadcast. Right. Right. And, and so I think that that's a, a, functionally, they just don't operate the same. And you've got to have the relationship or, or there's danger. By the way, I'll, I'll report this. I haven't seen this anywhere else. So I, I contacted the, the detective in the uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, so-called Facebook uh, robberies. Yeah. Where they had a, a yeah. whole string of robberies. Right. And they were supposedly that they'd done it off Facebook. Yeah. So I, I asked Facebook and they said, well, it wasn't places. And then they gave me the name of the detective. I went to the detective. And it's still an ongoing investigation, but he said that in both cases, there were only two cases where Facebook was involved in this robbery string. And in both cases, the victims were friends with the robbery. Oh, of course, because it's friends. Exactly. So, so is, you know, the status updates could be public, but, but they, in that case, it was only because they were stupid enough to befriend bad guys. <laughs> And almost uh, burglaries have... all the time. Any any police officer will tell you most burglaries are, you know, friends of friends or right. someone, you know, was yeah. in your house at a certain point. So it's just, it's a new way for people to check in on your house right. if they know you. Good on you on doing exactly. that research. I'm going to, I got to blog that a little later. Yeah, a little, little actual reporting revealed here on Twi Twitch. Jeez, it's like everybody is so anxious to believe these stories that they don't really actually want to debunk it. Yeah. <laughs> we want it to be true. <laughs> So uh, you, you must be interested in this story. Google, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, Apple uh, uh, working on a deal with newspapers to, be to turn the iPad into the new platform. Did you see this? Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's this. I love that Jeff is just so world-weary about this. You've <laughs> seen it all before, haven't you, Jarvis? A am I allowed to say wet dream? Yeah. Is it? Is it a wet dream? Yeah, sure it is. It's 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 the newspapers uh, still believing, like magazines, that oh, it's not iPad... your it's not your wet dream. It's theirs. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, it's theirs. It's it's their belief that the iPad is going to return control of the experience of the business model to them, and that we're all going to rush to subscribe now that we have the opportunity. And the argument will be made that well, we you did for music, you bought there, but music is unique and news is not. San Jose Mercury News says Apple to announce subscription plan for newspaper. This is John Boudreau uh, writing uh, yesterday and updating it this morning. Uh, Roger Fiddler, held head of the digital publishing at the Donald W. Reynolds Journalism Institute in Columbia, Missouri. Is that a well-known yeah, institution? Yeah, it actually is. Okay. Yeah, it is. It says Apple will take a 30% cut of all subscriptions sold through the App Store and, and as much as 40% of the ad revenue. So, of course, it's, uh, it looks... I mean, Apple's smart. Play on these poor <laughs> newspapers' fears. <laughs> yeah. So we can save you, and it will only cost you a little bit. Yep. And uh, whether it works or not, Apple doesn't care. No. no. Uh, Cupertino has agreed to provide an opt-in function 
for subscribers. So this is interesting. It allows Apple to share with publishers their information. Publishers want the data from their customers so they can integrate it into their circulation database so they know who their customers are. But you can That's turn that off. That's been a bone of contention. That's been a bone of contention with, with uh, newspapers, with publishers and Apple. Right. Is that Apple, quote unquote, owns the relationship as if, as if anyone can own us? But well, Apple thinks it does. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Publishers wanted yeah. to pay a fee, but eventually, uh, because they have no choice, agreed to a percentage. <laughs> right, and they're and 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 they're in the same problem the boat with with uh, Amazon, where uh, more than half the revenue from Amazon subscriptions right. goes to Sprint. And wow. the majority of what's left goes to the publisher, but it's so tiny as to not be at all worth it, and it's also a crappy experience. Well, that's interesting. So if I'm the New York Times, and I, if I subscribe to the New York Times on uh, Kindle, which I did for a long time, most of that money goes to Sprint and a little bit to exactly. Amazon and nothing to the uh, Salzberger family. Huh. Well, no, no, no. The, the <laughs> half, more than half, which I presume is 51%, of what's left over after Sprint goes to Salzberger, but okay. it amounts to bupkis. <laughs> More than half is bupkis <laughs> compared to what you would get if uh, you got a weekly subscription. Yeah. yeah. But now the okay, right. so the Wall Street Journal, which I also subscribe to on here, which is actually fairly expensive. Yes. Uh, on the iPad, um, does Apple take thirty percent? I guess they do of the subscription fee. Yeah. They, they take they, whatever they negotiated in that case. Whatever, yeah, they take that. Plus, now what I don't understand, Leo, is the 40% of the ad revenue. I wonder if they're talking about iAds, the Apple ad platform. I think they probably are, but I wonder whether Apple's going to require, pardon me, some uh, use of iAds in the newspaper apps to get into the newspaper store. If they did, they would just show how much they have the newspaper publishers over a barrel. If they could yeah. dictate, <laughs> oh, and by the way, we'll be selling those ads. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that would be insane. <laughs> that would be something. You would not. So, you, it would not be appropriate for you to sell your own advertising in this uh, <laughs> medium, would it? Because something could, terrible could happen. Jeez, Louise. But I guess when you got somebody like you know, desperate, well, because they're they're trying to preserve their old business model, and it ain't gonna work. It's just not gonna work. Mm -hmm. I feel like yesterday with the new Twitter, Twitter kind of landed on the side of the web over apps. Um, I thought that was really kind of well, interesting. Let's talk which about is sort that. Of Google's, yeah. Google's position on, on, on things. So we're, we kind of have this divergence going on. You, if, if I were a uh, third party Twitter developer, I'd be a little unhappy about this, especially if I were somebody like Brizzly, which is a web based uh, Twitter client. Uh, yeah, you have, to, you have to have some, offer something that, you know, the Twitter, tw Twitter.com doesn't have. Like something like CoTweet. Is, is great. It offers this ability for a team to tweet from a single handle. But to just be a Twitter client at this point, you, you, you've got to offer something that Twitter.com doesn't. And the new Twitter does a lot. It well, does a lot more. It, it, even more interesting, Twitter is finally putting conversations in because yes. mentioned in this tweet, retweeted by, tweets mentioning this, tweets, this, you know, if you open up this sidebar on a tweet, on a, tw on a tweet, pardon me, um, there's a lot of metadata there. A lot Although of metadata. The, the conversations are pretty limiting. It's just you don't get the, the full reply back and, forth. and the one before and the one it replied to, but right. you don't get the full thread if if there's a long back and forth, which that's a challenge. I was trying to I'm trying to do that with, with ThinkUp, and it's a it's a little bit of a challenge. But yeah, there's quite a bit of metadata there, and if you if you have a a, a tweet with location, it'll show a map. Right. Um. You can if you click on any location, you see a tweet to that location. It really surfaces a lot of the. The data that Twitter has hidden, because it, it they really it really does have a lot of metadata metadata hidden, and it does a lot of the things that your favorite apps do, and it looks like an iPad app. It I mean, it fantastic. is the iPad app. Yeah, it's really interesting. Now, uh, are they taking a chance by doing this um, that it will make Twitter so complicated that people will be scared off? Twitter has traditionally been very simple, very straightforward. Kevin, do you think this is too complicated for normal people? I, what is the percentage of people who are using the the website they before? They said seventy one percent uh, of all tweets come from the the Twitter web page. No, really? Yeah, huge, no huge really? majority. Yes. Yeah. I know. I was shocked too. Well, yeah. I I I imagine then for the supposed seventy one percent, this will be. Yeah, I don't think it's too complicated. I mean, it's just it's the same old scroll on the left. It's just that there's now some stuff on the right. If you you know want to address it. I guess you're right. Um, I guess if you if you don't look at what's on the right. It looks yeah, like way, if, if if it's just for you a scan thing, if it's just you know checking in and 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 checking out, then there's there's really no difference. But I, I I like it a lot. I wish I had it in my own account. See, we're the reason I ask is we're geeks. We like it. We like complexity. We like more features, not not fewer. We like uh, more data, a lot less. 
Um, and I think that Twitter has really succeeded by appealing to the MTV crowd. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't want, I don't want to be too disparaging, but it's it's appealed to a crowd that is not a, a sophisticated. This, I mean, this definitely feels like a little bit of a turn in the different dif different direction. This combined with the turning off basic authentication, which which caused a lot of a, a lot of ruffles. People were saying, "Hey, you know, I built my Twitter app because it was so easy right. to authenticate, and now you have to figure out OAuth, which which is involves right. a chain of back and forth." And there are a lot of one-off Twitter apps that maybe would have never happened if they had launched with just OAuth. You know, Twitter was just so simple and that's what it made it easy to develop on. And so, and I think this UI is also a little, a little more complicated. I don't know that it's too complicated, but it's definitely a little more complicated. They're definitely taking, taking a risk with their, their, their call, their, you know, the thing that made them famous, which was the total Sim simplicity. simplicity. I have to say, Gina, I, I like this a lot though. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. But Gina, we had this discussion around, pardon me for saying it again, but, but when Google dropped wave, um, mm -hmm. What did that do to developers? And when Twitter started its own client, what did that do to developers? Mm -hmm. um, you know, aren't we in the same boat here if you're a developer and you're choosing where to put your, your effort? And Twitter was made by developers. It was made by the fact that it was an API. Uh, yep. Biz has said that often. Are, are, are they now thinking, well, we're now too big for them. We don't need the developers anymore. Puh. Or are there new opportunities because the API has more data? Where do, what's the relationship to the developers that comes out of all this? I think I think Twitter def desperately wants developers to build something, anything other than a client. Even when I went to Hack Day, I talked to Doug at Twitter, and he was just like, "What can we do to get people to build? You know, developers to do something that's just more than oh, hey, look, here's the data. You know, here's just another <laughs> client." Um, so, and I think that's you know, as a developer, you go to where the people are, you go to where you're interested, and where the people are, and you're interested in the places where you can interact with your friends. And then you know, after a while, I mean, I think there was this, there was this golden age for Twitter apps where the Twitter website just could barely stay up, forget being functional. Right. And that was the time when you wanted to make a really great rich client. But now it's, you know, it's a new time when you, you know, they just raise the bar. They're asking you to do more, you know, interesting and clever things, things that, that, that the site itself doesn't do. So for me, I just, I, I see it as kind of just, you know, a, a more of a challenge. Um, but, I, but it is disheartening. I mean, I think it's disheartening for, for a site like Brizzly or TweetDeck or, you know, any, any client developer who, who's been, you know, working on their Twitter client for a long time and it does all the things now that the Twitter website does and it, it gives, gives your users less of a reason to download your app. Uh, so it just forces developers to really market the thing that they do that differentiates them from the core service. I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, well, I think for right that's, now, it's, not, it's only on the web, not mobile, right? Right. Right. You get the right. old UI so, if you go mobile. Mobile apps, unless you are in love with the Twitter app, which a lot of people are, but it, there are still lots of mobile apps that will uh, have a kind of unique uh, offering for, for Twitter. Mm -hmm. right. That's true. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think By the way, I'm, least, I'm, go ahead. Nope, your turn. Nope. Sorry. I'm stupid. I can't find in this the recommendations, the people recommendations to me. Um, yeah, I was, I was trying to find who to follow, too, and I couldn't. I thought they were on my page, and then I accepted everybody. I said, oh, that's great, 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 <laughs> and now it's gone. So maybe it was, uh, when I first got it, it was over here in this empty space to the right of trends. Yeah, no, the, I think that they pulled it. Maybe they maybe pulled it. early because, uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I'm maybe not seeing it either. It. I, you know, the who to follow was well, like, I, it was one of those things where I just was like, okay, don't show me. I wanted to say don't show me this person again, uh, which is something that, that Facebook has that, that Twitter right. didn't yes. have. Yes. Um, like, yeah, I know this person. They're kind of annoying. Don't show me. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. There's a reason I'm not following him. <laughs> I would right. imagine for a lot of the developers, um, it's kind of like the situation that a lot of news is in now where if you can get, if the Twitter website is good enough, as good as a standard, show me my friends, show me my replies uh, client, then they have to come up with something that is, you know, unique and allow Twitter to do the basic stuff. Um, you know, like Gina's Think Up, which is a really in-depth reply and, um, you know, user response tracking tool. And I'm sure that we'll probably find some differentiated stuff, like maybe, you know, safe apps for kids, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. I would think. I mean, now that Twitter's good enough for most people. Um, it was really to, interesting because you saw this coming. Uh, you know, um, they started making noise and they used uh, Fred Wilson to say, uh, boy, if I were you, I wouldn't write any more third-party Twitter apps. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. they did. <laughs> right. Right. And it was really, you could see this all coming. Yes. And, uh, and I, you know, I have to say, I think they handled this very well. I think uh, Twitter might end up being a very good case study for how to do it right. Um, they suffered badly with the fail well, but they hung in there.
They obviously fixed those issues because um, they're handling huge amounts of traffic now. They kept the site simple when there was a lot of pressure to do otherwise, but they did add features as users kind of organically created them, like the ad symbol was not originally in Twitter. That was added because users started using it. Um, and I think that they did. I think that they've done everything very cleverly. And I have to yeah, say, this is impressive what they've done here. It is. If you go back, I, I, I saw Ev when I was in San Francisco once more for the book, and you know, not forgetting his heritage at Blogger, he went through really desperate fail, fail well times then when the thing was just right. down all the time. It's and, quite and, famous, and I, yeah. I joked that the that the server was in his kitchen. He's well, no, it wasn't, but you know everything else was. Uh, and uh, he had an incredible determination to show everybody and make it work. And you know, I think, if you think about it, that he shares that with Zuckerberg. Mm. And he had right? a lot of experience with Blogger, right? I mean, this was yes. his experience with, with Blogger back in the day too. I mean, there was some yes. story he was he said I was sitting on my kitchen floor, like I'd lost my old company, I couldn't pay anyone, but I believed in this thing that I built, right. you know, and it turned out to be. A huge deal. No, Ev, Ev is uh, Ev is fantastic, and he has good ideas. And uh, it's it's he did hang in there. And I was going to say earlier, one 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 good thing, the other great thing that Twitter does is their developer relations are very good. Their developer support is very good, and they keep upgrading the API. Like they just they've just uh, released the user streams API, which is push versus pull. So as a developer, you don't have to keep polling; it will notify oh. you. So so oh, that's wow. you know that's an exciting thing well, for a developer you know that's the kind of thing that you're like oh okay this gives me more possibilities for what i can do but they are kind of trying to deprecate pub sub hubbub aren't they uh they, yeah th there's an interesting where did i i bookmarked the uh, article if i can find it that's yeah that that where is interesting. A, little, a little anti pub sub hubbub fub fud yeah. <laughs> I hadn't, you know, I hadn't really thought about that, but that is that is interesting. They they, they implied that uh, better to use our notification uh, system than PubSub Hubbub, which is open. Uh, and they said something about it's not being deep. I'll f I, I put I thought I put a link in here and I don't see it, but um, wow, it's like breaking up with somebody. Yeah, PubSub Hubbub Fud. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a show title. Uh, let's see. What else is going on? Well, Google uh, kind of a little egg on the face here uh, with its uh, employee who was spying on... Oh, ouch. 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 Yeah. Now, this, ouch. Is from, ouch. this is from ouch. Gawker, but Google has confirmed that they have fired the fellow. A Google engineer spied on four underage teens for months before the company was notified of the abuse David Barksdale, a 27-year-old former Google engineer, repeatedly took advantage of his position as a member of an elite technical group at the company to access users' accounts, violating the privacy of at least four minors during his employment. He met the kids through a technology group in the Seattle area while working as an SRE, a site reliability engineer, in the uh, Kirkland, Washington office of Google. He was fired, according to Google, in July after his actions were reported to the company. Google says, look... SREs have to be, we have to have some engineers that can access data. It's just a requirement. This is a dirty little secret of every single big web company. The fact is that there are engineers who can access the production database, and sometimes they're going to do it for not good enough reasons. And I, I think that this happens a lot, a lot more, a lot of times it never gets caught. Uh, I think that, you know, Google handled it the way they needed to handle it. But, I mean, it does definitely emphasize the the requirement that you you've got to have these people have they have to be highly trusted they have to earn credentials in order to have access to this data but i think it happens a lot i mean I, wasn't there a story about facebook where it's, uh, an engineer was quoted as saying like hey yes. what do you want to know about who i'll just look them up in the production database right now right. um and and you know the, the fact is that when you're developing a web application you know at least back in the day when, when i had a my, my kind of full-time programming job you know we pull down data from the production database into the staging database just to test things and you know you, you see things Things that you know private messages or whatever that you know and you're like oh yeah th I mean there's got to be really strong procedures in place is there any to way to track that or any way to team up or what if you if you were gonna try if you're Google now and say we've got to do something to not let this happen again what is that you've just got you've just got to have really robust procedures in place like any time an SRE or site reliability person or somebody with the right credentials does access the production database live database of of of, of, uh, of 
you know, sensitive data, they've got to log that, they've got to justify it, they've got to have a reason. I mean, but the reality is, with an operation like Google with so many engineers and so many servers and, and, and you know, dealing with problems, that's, that's a big, it's a lot of hoops to have to have an engineer jump through just to check on whether or not someone's, you know, Google, Google chat is working or why a group of users, you know, the service is down. Uh, but I think, I mean, I do think it's possible and I think the stories like this are definitely uh, a reason why, a reason and, to and do that. Raw the raw whodunit is involves uh, looking up a call on Google Voice, looking up an IM on Google Talk, going through a you know a Gmail contact list. It, it's it's pretty much the tinfoil hat brigade's worst nightmare, and it's only yep. or, one engineer out of nightmare. twenty thousand employees, right? But I mean, still, <laughs> Google's it, it, uh, response from uh, Bill Cogren, who is a senior vice president of engineering Google. Quote, we dismissed David Barksdale for breaking Google's strict, inter strict internal privacy policies. We carefully control the number of employees who have access to our systems, and we regularly upgrade our security controls. For example, we are significantly increasing the amount of time we spend auditing our logs to ensure those controls are effective. That said, a limited number of people will always need to access these systems if we are to operate them properly which is why we take any breach so seriously. I mean, they, there's nothing they can do about this. These, these things. I mean, are, it almost yeah. needs you, you need a team, that you need two people on a team. Buddy system. A right. buddy system. And you have to use, uh, you know, use systems that check to see, is there an employee who's regularly accessing, other, you know, that, that, that basically, you know, analyze the activity and see if there's anything improper going on. You know, if this one engineer was accessing these, these four teens data for over the, over the course of four months, like that seems like unusual behavior to me, you know, and listen, if any company's going to do it, Google's going to do it in terms of, they, they've got, they've got incredible sort of systems set up for developers to, 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 to work on projects. And I imagine that their security has to be super, super high. Well, it's going to, it, it's torture for me. I mean, Kevin, you're right. I just got back from, from Berlin where they're, you know, nutty about, about, uh, Street View, and they still bring up the the data collection on the Wi-Fi, which of course is absolutely you know was stupid, and they effed up and and allowed somebody to do that, and they shouldn't have done it, and but it had no commercial value. That's just paranoia talking. Yeah. This is the real fear. This is that 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 we all trust our stuff there, and Google could lose business this way. Companies could say, you know, somebody could find sensitive financial information. Well, you know, Kevin Mitnick, the uh, famous hacker, always said that the weakest element in any security system is always the human one. So if you've got, you know, a, it, 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 with those good filters that Gina mentioned in place, yeah, you can you can notice that someone's doing something, but it's it's the people you hire that have to be, you know, caliber enough not to do it. But the other, well, you're always amazing... chasing. It's, it's like spam, isn't it, Kevin? You're always chasing the bad guys that they yeah. will outsmart the filter you have. Yeah. The other amazing thing is that a 15 year old uses Google Voice. I mean, can you imagine the raw volume of data you create if you're a Google Voice user and you're like 15 or 16 and you have a social life? I, I then, don't, use, okay. don't use Google Voice, kids. Uh, <laughs> well, what amazes me is my kids don't talk on the phone. They, don't, they never talk. They hate talking on the phone. Yeah. All their no, friends hate talking. What if you're the using the SMS service through Google Voice? I mean, my God. Free, like, free texts. Uh, this, yeah, text, right. yeah, These are obviously you? sophisticated teens because my kids haven't figured <laughs> that out. But uh, somebody who's sophisticated knows that, oh, yeah, we just use uh, the Google, Google Voice. Wow. All right, oh. let's uh, let's get to our tools and our tips and our numbers of the week. But uh, before that, we got to figure out a way that we can all, even though we're in New York, San Francisco, San Diego, go see the, the Facebook movie on October 1st. We got to figure out <laughs> some way we could all see this together. What are we going to do? Should we create a, a Google Wave? Oh, can you stream a screening, but just to us, Leo? <laughs> There's got to be some way we could do this. Wave uh, will still be around on October 1st. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, that's true. Or we could just have our chat room. Everybody bring your chat to the theater. <laughs> there you go. And we'll, have a sp and we'll just broadcast the chat. And we could just and we just make fun of it, like just the whole thing. Just talk it the whole time. <laughs> It'd be a lot. Well, well, live blogging, but live can chatting. You, can you do that? Can, I think you. I know in my theater you have to turn everything off, but uh, but I guess we could chat. Could we? Look, chat? he's typing dramatically. <laughs> 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 yeah, we could have so much fun. I'm going to a screening of Catfish tonight, which I hadn't heard about, but apparently it's a documentary about an online relationship gone awry. Oh, I will let you know how it goes. That never happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, Eileen, my, our new producer, is your, I am charging you with figuring out a way that every single person who watches this show and listens to this show can join me, Jeff, Gina, Kevin, and anybody else who wants to watching October 1st. We all have to go to the first screening. We could just, we'll download the torrents and we'll broadcast it on Twitter. That's what we'll do. It'll solve the whole. Welcome to the job, Eileen. <laughs> 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 this is what Gary Delabate feels like. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Gary. <laughs> Baba boy to you all. Gina, your tip of the week. Kevin, do you have something? I do, I do. Kevin, your yeah, Kevin's tip of the it. week. <laughs> it, um, in the complete Android guide, um, which uh, you should be following, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. Um, the I have a section in the tutorials uh, uh, with annoyance fixes. Um, and one of the annoyances that I've always heard from people is this one application crashes every single time. And uh, so I came up with what is the, uh, I guess it's the holy trinity plus an atomic fourth option uh, for fixing, <laughs> fixing apps that are crashing on you all the time without, um, you know, without using a third party uh, app or anything. So in the, uh, Leo has his phone there if you wanted to follow along. Oh, okay, uh, okay, the, okay. So on the Droid X you hit menu, Hold on, if, it's, if, if it's up to Froyo, but I guess it wouldn't be, maybe. Uh, okay, I have to put up my uh, my put my thing on the screen. Okay, let me log in. Yeah. Okay. Go so to, uh, go to you, menu. All right. Menu mm -hmm. and then settings. Settings. Okay. Following along at home. Under applications. Yeah, which I use a lot. Okay. Um, and then manage applications. All right. You know, I use that so much. I actually have a shortcut on the desktop that brings me right to yes. the page. Which you can do by holding down on the home screen and, right. and choosing shortcuts. Right. Um, that's one. Now, you I have, have to say that's a really nice feature uh, uh, that Android has over the iPhone. Is the yes. ability to go to any page in the settings right from the desktop. Now um, I'm not sure how it looks different on your screen than mine, but under the yeah, this all is the section, Moto Blur crap. crap yeah. Right. Well, under a, a, a phone running Froyo, you should have an all section, and you can click on an app, uh, any app like. Let me let me um, open the menu because I think the menu. Google Voice in my case, which is, I, I sometimes have some problems with so Google Voice. So I have sort by size or filter, and I should just not filter. I should say all. Okay, now I have all. There's everything. Uh, well, now, what do I want to do now? Let's pick a, pick an app that's this, wonky. That, like, that might, uh, for me, it might crash a lot. I'll just say it's a yeah, long there you timer. Go. Okay. Just, just click it. Okay. And then, um, so it's laid out differently, but there are three options that you want to go through usually. Uh, the first one is four stop. Yeah, and uh, that usually, if if an app is crashing on you right now, that's that's the first step, and that'll kill it and cause it at least rejigger itself. And sometimes that works. Okay. Um, the next step is to clear the cache um, yeah. of the app if you if it's there, if it's available. That that clears out the temporary data that an app might be holding. And sometimes if bad data gets in there, uh, the Twitter app for me, that happens all the time. Um, you know, it might be causing you not to be able to sync or go on. The third option is clear data. That's above here. And that, yeah. that actually wipes out your, um, all the data that's storing on your phone. So you might have to re-log in to certain apps like Twitter clients or Google Voice. Um, and that usually, by that time, if you relaunch the app, everything's gonna be working. And then I guess the atomic fourth option is uninstall. Right. And uh, you usually don't want to have to do that. That often doesn't fix things. You might just have to wait for the developer to update the app. But that's the, uh, that's the holy trinity plus the atomic fourth for um, <laughs> diagnosing problems with apps on Android. Force stop, clear cache, clear data, or uninstall. Excellent. Kevin, I, I'm finding apps now. It's like the old uh, abandoned uh, uh, ghost town of websites. <laughs> I'm now finding ghost town apps. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of them. So, Apps that for have been example, released and not updated. Yep. Yeah. So, for example, uh, the Path Train in in New Jersey. I was looking at the schedule today to make sure I got here on time, and I have an app, uh, and it hasn't been filled in, and God knows how long. And there's right. no way that there's no way to kind of check activity of when was the la app last touched yeah. or what's the current status or anything like that. I would I would love to have some structure to be able to look at the currency of an app. And all the more irritating is if I pay for an app, and then they, yeah. they go ghost down. That's a, that's as, a, Gina, as Gina and I can tell you, it's really frustrating with, like, say, Firefox add-ons when someone has a brilliant overnight app and then they never touch it again. Right. Like yeah. a brilliant Firefox add-on that just doesn't get touched <laughs> again, doesn't get updated, and you're like, oh, come on, this was so great, and you just don't have the long-term love. Like, uh. 
are you yeah. saying something about my Firefox extensions? No, not your, <laughs> not your extensions. No, no, no. I'm saying you would see, an, we'd, we'd post to an app on Lifehacker and it would look great. And, and the comments yes. start off with everyone saying, this is amazing. And then you, you look at the post three months later and the comments have turned into, this is total crap. Yeah. Total hater fest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that yeah. reminds me, so, I got to update my Firefox extensions. <laughs> better Gmail, better, uh, better everything, yeah. better life. Yeah, I'll, yes. I'll mention them when they're up when they're actually up to date. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have said the name. <laughs> Forget I mentioned it. No, that. But you know, there is the uh, maybe a disadvantage to having a low bar to entry is that anybody can write an app and put it in right. the marketplace. And so uh, a lot of a lot of I write I used to write apps all the time that I would just write as a one off, and I'm not gonna, I don't want to maintain it. But if it's mm -hmm. easy to put in the marketplace, of course, it's going to get there very quickly. If you didn't pay ninety nine dollars and have to go through Apple's draconian approval process, very good. So, Gina, are you off the hook now? I guess you are. I, I'm letting myself off the hook. I had a tip that fell through. Oh, we'll, yeah. We'll talk you, about it next week. Before the break, we were saying, before the show started, you were saying, oh, well, that's too bad. I got right. a little something, but it, it's not working quite the way I expected, so I'm not going to say what it okay. is. Okay. Well, next in that week. case, we go to Jeffrey Jarvis and his number of the week. Uh, I just found a new one here. Uh, someone from Twitter sent in uh, one that was very nice that, and I can't find their name right now, and I apologize. Wherever you are, thank you very much. That uh, on the Google Voice, I mean, sorry, Google um, mobile uh, blog, they said that uh, they're up to on Android, one quarter of the searches on Android are voice. Wow. Nice. Whoa. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Is that, now, I guess you don't have to have Froyo to do voice search. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Not no. at all. The basic, the whenever, basic Google search. No. Right, right, right. Whenever I um, do think to use it, it's incredible. I oh, forget yeah. once in a while. Oh, yeah. But when I do, it really does work uh, amazingly well. And I don't care if people look at me like I'm a nut. <laughs> That's the sign it works. And then I just saw another one. Chris Hughes, of course, ex-Facebook, uh, um, just put up a, uh, a story from CNN saying that candidates with more Facebook fans won big on Tuesday. Huh. Which mm -hmm. is kind of... Is Facebook the way to predict election results? Uh, Call me... Who knows? Uh, the uh, uh, now I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna embarrass myself terribly. I'm gonna fail the current events quiz. A former head of Pakistan who is um, um, exiled to London right now. I'm uh, not, Musharraf. Not Musharraf. Sure. Uh, my my colleague Sandeep Jonarkar at CUNY just told me today that uh, that he announced that he's going to uh, plan to come back to Pakistan, and his justification for doing so was because the people want it. And how does he know that? Because of all of his Facebook friends. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. this is why I'm back on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, because I would like to return from exile as well. <laughs> Does 538, has he done any, has Nate done any sort of Facebook friend to election results? He should. Uh, this would be a should. meet for the grist for the mill at 538.com. It really would be. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really quite great. So, so the story on CNN, which I'll, I'll put up on the, uh, on, on the, the uh, delicious feed momentarily, um, it's kind of interesting that you, 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 it's, it gives you a new data point to check on. And, you know, during, during the last presidential election, it was true that those who were more involved on the Internet made more money yeah, on the Internet. That's true. As, as straightforward as could be. Yeah. Rudy Giuliani, my favorite thing about the campaign last time was Rudy Giuliani's um, MySpace page until the very end of the campaign was private. <laughs> well, now that's just moronic. Isn't it? Isn't it magnificently moronic? I love it. God, I wouldn't vote for him just for that. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. That's amazing. Jeez. Oh, I don't want anybody to see anything about me. <laughs> that would be terrible. So my tip is something that I, I, I also found on uh, probably on Twitter or somewhere, probably Lifehacker. I don't know. I steal stuff right and left. It's a website called Unsubscribe. Have you guys seen this? Oh, this is, sounds like heaven to me. It is heaven. <laughs> I'm in heaven. So uh, I don't know about you, but my, and I, I tell you what, moving to Gmail and seeing the uh, priority inbox really brought this home. More than three quarters, probably 80% of all my mail is bacon. That is not exactly spam, but informational email, usually lists I subscribe to and things like that. So oh, I got to switch over here. Unsubscribe.com is a free service that you also have a paid version that will unsubscribe you from any mailing list. And they have plugins for Yahoo Mail, Gmail, Hotmail, and Yay! AOL Mail. So, and now it, it, you get five unsubscribes a month for free. I immediately paid the $19. Oh, I'm, paying. I'm paying for this. Because <laughs> watch this. There's a now is a button. 
uh, when you install the plugin right there on your Gmail, right next to. So, and and if you look at, Boom. you know, if you look at my mail, a lot of it is like this. You know, at some point I, I went to this website, I bought something, and now I just press the unsubscribe button, and they're going to unsubscribe me. And they, they put it at the top of the window that you're uh, unsubscribed, and then you can move on. Uh, let's see, IT oh, yeah. World wrap up yeah there's another one i've been just been filling up my inbox unsubscribing and unsubscribed and then if you go back to uh, unsubscribe.com uh, i'll log in here and it shows you all of the unsubscriptions attempts it's made it gives you a, uh, also a, a regular uh, email digest um and you can see how effective it has been and it's it's quite effective i mean it, it, it really works i have to say um i don't know what kind of you know, a lot of times there's an unsubscribe link at the bottom, and you could do this by hand. They're obviously doing more than just that. It's, or it's, safe unsubscribe has a fair number of them, but the service that I obviously want from them is tell me all the, you know, of, your, of your customers who have me subscribed and let me get the hell off of them. But, of course, they don't do that because their customer is right. the spammer. Right. Versus, <laughs> yeah, that or, would be too user-friendly, you know, Jeff. Right. Yeah, the nice spammer. These aren't spammer spammers. They're people who who put me on a list, which in some cases might almost be relevant, but it isn't. I didn't ask for this. Well, that's the thing. A lot of times I feel bad because I kind of, well, yeah, at some point I probably said, okay. But um, Well, you're nicer than I am. I never did, but even so, <laughs> I don't want it. So I can't, I'm trying to find, and I guess I might have deleted the, uh, the, the digest I got, but it was great. It said, we've unsubscribed you. It was like 30 or 40 things now. Here's three more pending and here's a couple that need action on your part. And uh, so it's been very effective, and it really has made a big difference. Actually, I was really tempted last night to just get rid of it all, but I thought, no, I have to save some for uh, this week in Google, so I'll have something to show them. Uh, <laughs> I'll some bet, things I'll bet you guys to. also end up, as I do, from, from your uh, Lifehacker days and, and Leo from your worldwide fame, um, that you end up on a, one of those horrible PR lists. Lots oh, of PR God. lists. And that is, is the worst in the world. This it works is. with them, Jeff. It works with them. Oh. I'm so happy. It works with <laughs> PR lists. So really? I've unsubscribed from about 30 of those, Jeff. That's exactly right. I am on a oh. million of them. Interesting. Um, so it's not just mailing lists. It's not just, I mean. So when you just get a PR press release from like some BS PR firm, you can hit unsubscribe and it Yeah, sends... because most of them are using constant contact or some other standardized list system. Right, and so, it detects that from the headers, and then I guess it must. A, I guess it so must. If it's just like some dumb guy at PR firm, like does it no. does it send an email? <laughs> some to, dumb to, guy. To... <laughs> some dumb guy at prfirm.com. <laughs> does it send well, a email, I, or like what does it tell you at that point? Does that's it a say, good oh, question. We don't know? Um, I, so far, I, I haven't had that happen. That it probably does. I, I find all the time that the problem is that I'll get some dumb guy at the PR firm, and I I get my twentieth email, and I finally just get pissed off, and I just send it. An unsubscribe notice. Now, if they were smart, they'd just do it. They'd and that's it. Of course, then they send me email back. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. No, and then another no, one no. confirming that I'm off. And I, did the, I just I, want it off. I'm sure if so they're not here. using some special software to do this, that it's not, you know, it's not going right. to work. Right. It's not. <laughs> you just have to send a personal thing. But I'll, I'll have to say, almost all my bacon is using some sort of system. You know, right. Right. Because they're not going to do individual emails. They're going to use. So, um, I, sh I don't want to focus on any one person, but uh, here's one uh, for immediate release. See when I see that right at the top there? Yep. I say, yeah, okay. I I'm sure that'll be interesting, but why don't I just press this unsubscribe button right here? <laughs> it's so cathartic. <laughs> it really is. That's really exciting. Is. That's, all, that's as good as not important. And if you map, if you do this and then uh, keep your fingers on the left bracket and right bracket, you can just scroll through all your mail unsubscribe oh, oh, oh. <laughs> unsubscribe and uh, there you go unsubscribe and you know no no insult here meant but uh, unsubscribe and archive all can the you way mark, down the can line can you mark the little left boxes and do it uh, and batch uh no well maybe i don't know i haven't tried that it's kind of they're I, afraid they're afraid of the power that would unleash i think it's kind of fun too here's a gift for leo unsubscribe <laughs> yeah, Kevin, you're right. It's tempting to go ahead and unsubscribe to my entire world and see who comes back. Yeah, exactly. If you're a human, you can come back. If you're, if you, if this worked, then. So I just, they say in some cases it may take a while and so forth. But I, I love the report. I can't uh, pull it up. I would love to pull it up for you, but it's really, uh, it's a nice little, nice little feature.
Good tip, Leo. Unsubscribe.com. Yeah, well, and I wish I could remember. On immediately. What do they charge for the uh, premium? It's nineteen dollars a year. Indeed. Fine. And if you do it right, that's you a... probably don't need to uh... see see Rupert Murdoch. That's worth paying for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Repeated little... news is not worth paying. No. For. That's worth paying for. <laughs> yeah. Getting rid of people who irritate me—that's worth paying. For. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell that we're all just like just been hammered with all this crap for so long that we're just bitter. By the way, this is a little meta, but unsubscribe.com does have a unsubscribe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't know what it means. I don't even know if it works. But there, there you go. And uh, they are on Twitter as unsubscribe. Dot, uh, unsubscribe me at unsubscribe me. Uh, so, Leo, I figured out the other tweet you were in recently that, that you responded to, and, and I wanted to mention it. Uh, I forget the guy's name because it was wonderful. But I was in Chipotle, which I go to very often. A uh, little bit of rice, a lot of black beans, and I'm saying that in the line, and the guy in front of me looks around quizzically, and from the voice alone, he said, you're on Twig. Oh, wow. Wow. Which love those moments, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. That is cool. That's cool. Great to have you all. Kevin Purdy, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Kevin's book, The Complete Guide to Android. To, <laughs> you stopped me from before I said wave. Uh, the Complete Guide. Yes. <laughs> it's just um, built in. I, I just have to mention real quick that um, if, you're if you follow us on Twitter at uh, Complete Android, all one word, mm -hmm. uh, this week we're giving away a 20% discount uh, to the book. And you get that by uh, DMing us uh, from, you know, we have an auto follow just for this week. And uh, you DM us and we will send you a coupon code. And we are doing that until Friday at midnight. I think the coupon code changes every day. Um, but that way you get 20% off the book. And uh, What's, what is also, it, Complete Guide? Uh, no, it's, it's Complete Android, Kevin. Twi yes, Twitter.com slash Complete Android. Okay, I mistyped oh, it. Twitter. Complete Com. Android. Let me try that again. There and we go. There we go. I'm already I following. Totally rip off tips from uh, this Twitter stream to fe for feature here on Twigs. You should follow <laughs> <laughs> Complete Android anyway. <laughs> it's just me at three in the morning in my phone. And um, <laughs> so we, we send out tips and tricks on that uh, feed pretty often. And uh, like I said, this week, if you're following it and you dm us i uh, will uh, send you back a coupon code to get 20 percent off the book that's great and uh you can yes. read it online at complete android guide uh, dot com as well and uh, that's correct for the paperback the book is out now on ebook as well at nine dollars like them on facebook follow them on twitter <laughs> dm <laughs> them so for 20 20 percent off 10 percent off whatever it is Yes, um, and it's uh, all done, and, and we're going to be updating it, though, as you know, new things uh, roll into Android. I would so. be remiss if I did not ask you, which phone yes. is your fave? Uh, having written a book where I wanted to get new features early, it's the, uh, the Nexus One. Yeah. Still, but, still, uh, still the purest, truest yes. Android phone. I love yes, it. Yes, it's really the it's the only pure. Oh, that sounds terrible. Uh, it's the only <laughs> Android experience where you're not getting you know what a carrier wants you to see. Well, as you said, and, as I uh, walk through those screens, oh, well, that looks a little. Oh, that looks a little different because that Motorola stuff on top of it. Yeah, Motorola is uh, not as bad as HTC, but no, still, I it's, like, a, it's a, On the other hand, I like the HTC widgets. So, what's your second choice, stuff. Kevin? Second what's choice. What's your second choice? Um. The G2 looks really good from um, the brand new one. Yeah, HTC. yeah, it's brand cool. new, just out on T-Mobile, yeah. I think, for pre-order. But that also has the pretty much the stock Android interface. Oh, really? They're not putting so. sense on it. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm I'm fifty fifty on that. I, th I I've seen screenshots with I the like stock sense Android. A lot. Huh? Yeah. But, uh, uh, but but it would, but it's nice to have the choice. You know, and the nice thing about sense, unlike Blur, is you do have the choice. You can yes, you and can also, launch the launcher. Um, I'm using Launcher Pro, which is, I think, what you're Install about to like talk about. Yeah, this is the... Yep, yeah. I and love that, that gives Launcher you a more Google-like uh, launcher. Yeah, really nice. Crashes yes. periodically, but it's uh, it's really sweet. And I have to say, once I got used to the big screen, it's hard for me not to love the Droid X. I, still... I, uh, I, was, I, pressed, uh, I pressed the last edit I could make on the book, uh, and as I did it, I saw a market update, and there was a new Street View uh, update to... That's right. To the, and it'll never end. It will never end. We didn't mention that, but yes, yeah, Street View has been updated. And, uh, but we'll update the book, and uh, thanks so much for, for reading and following it. There you go. Kevin Purdy, thank you for being here. Gina Trapani is also a regular on this show, and uh, we're glad you're here. She Good is show. at smarterware.org, and also watch for her uh, new series at Fast Company. Oh, yeah, fastcompany.com slash work smart. Actually, Leo, your video is live today. Yay! 
Yay. and securing nice. passwords with LastPass. Yay. So uh, uh, thank you for your time on that, Leo. You, you you give me credibility, man. Uh, give me I'll credibility. Give me a break. You're Gina <laughs> Trapani. I know. Company. My pal Leo over here, he's going to give a little work. advice. <laughs> His work's smart. I just want to see. Well, I didn't say much anyway. I was a, it was a quick thing. Good. That's cool. I can't wait to see that. Thank you. Cool. That looks like a lot of... Uh, a lot of fun, a great series for people who haven't seen this it. This is just the nicest part of the internet. It is. It's all the good people. It's the nicest people. It's the good people. Makes me feel warm and cut. Gina wrote a good article, by the way, on the uh, on the new, which is also at WorkSmart, on the new Twitter.com. I meant ah. to mention this, but you have a very good article on here. Thanks. People want to know more about it. Mr. Jeff Jarvis is a uh, professor of journalism. Professor 2.0, as we call him. At They'll the, give one to anybody. At the City University of New York. His blog is buzzmachine.com. His book, What the Hell Would Google Do? Said just like that. Is available in <laughs> bookstores everywhere. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Are you going to be here next week? Uh, you're not traveling? Uh, from uh, Picnic in Amsterdam. <laughs> Why don't you just move to Europe for crying out loud? I know, I know. <laughs> this is the last one for a while. <laughs> well, actually not. It's almost left. Great. I'm going platinum this year, Leo. I'm going Are platinum. You? Yeah. Wow. Is that that's the yeah, highest sickest. level? Yeah. That's the sickest level. Sickest. Do you get a special card? You get a card, it doesn't do you anything. Ninja it. card. All right. Yeah. Thank you everybody for joining us. We do this show every single Wednesday at uh, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC live.twit.tv. Chat along with us as with all our shows in the chat room irc.twit.tv and after the fact audio and video are available for download in perpetuity at twit.tv slash twig. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on This Week in Google.